<laughs> Wonderful. Oh. All right. I clean up my language now. Where's your spouse out chasing tomatoes? Exactly. She's out counting tomatoes. <laughs> Does it make them grow faster? She counts them. Yeah, it's like watching boiled water. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Morning, Russ. Good morning. You still locked down? Oh, yes. I think we will be for some time. Getting a big time out. I think you're right on that, the way things are looking. I, I, think, the, I think the end of October sounds likely, which mm -hmm. sounds terrible, but I, well, I have a feeling we'll be lucky if it's the end of October. Yeah, I think yep. so, too. I don't know. About a hundred cases a day. I don't know. We don't. We don't get that kind of information. I. It's a. Uh, the uh, Washington uh, Health Department has a. The, uh, what do you call it? A dashboard. That shows the information every day. Ah. Get on the internet and go to uh, Washington Department of Health and find their COVID dashboard. Uh, there we Probably go. don't want to know. No, I, <laughs> yeah. My days are, um, uh, yeah, enough. I don't need that. <laughs> hey, <Tim. clears throat> Hi. All it does is scare you. So. I'll make you feel so, make you sad. Mm. And being sad wears your immune, your immune system down anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You can't win, Clement. No, no, you can't. No. no. Hi, Debbie. <clears throat> I saw that Hello. You, <laughs> I saw that your spouse walked by. How many tomatoes did she count? <laughs> How many did you count? Oh, I got a couple of dozen. Oh. Did you bring them in the house? Oh no, I'll do after church. <laughs> I brought um. in. I brought in part of a sack of bigger tomatoes and then a whole cool whip thing of the little ones. <laughs> and that's not all. Hello, Patty. Hi, hey, Patty. She left, Pat. Oh, well, I scared <laughs> her. I'm sorry, I scared her off. Hello, <laughs> Debbie, how are you doing? Debbie? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. I tried. You froze her. Yeah. Hello, Marilyn. No, nope, can't hear her. Oh, it here, it seems. It's us there, everybody. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Morning, Holly. There, Patty is. Yeah. We'll try it again. <laughs> and how is the leg feeling today? It hasn't awakened yet. Oh, no. oh does it go to sleep on you? No. <laughs> no, it's it's doing okay. Well, you never know. Strange two things have happened, and I mean Oh yes. <laughs> just I almost, I almost expected it to, Glenn, because <laughs> You know, if I were locked into something, I'd probably go to sleep. Well, what I remember is when I took off the cast after six weeks, it was.
The Lord be with you. I'm Pastor Liz, and with me is Pastor Dexter, and we are so grateful to welcome you to Longview Presbyterian Church this morning. If you are present with us here in the physical space, welcome. We are so glad that you are here. And if you are joining us on Zoom at home, hello. We are so happy that you are with us as well. We are a community of faith that is seeking Christ's way and welcoming all people, and we're just so grateful that everyone is gathered here in body and in spirit today. In this new phase of worship, just a few reminders. There is no singing for people in person, but you are invited to hum along with your mouth closed under your mask with the music. Uh, please keep your mask on at all times unless you are up here at the pulpit doing liturgy. And at this point, I want to invite up Ron Naff, our liturgist today, to lead us in our land acknowledgement. Our church has instituted the practice of land acknowledgement at the beginning of our public worship services, acknowledging that this building occupies land stolen from its original stewards, the Cowlitz Indian tribe. The Cowlitz Tribes Cultural Department provided us with a statement to begin our church's gatherings. Please join me in speaking these words out loud together. It is vital to honor those who came before us and acknowledge the long history of what is now Southwest Washington State. This area has been home to our ancestors of the Cowlitz Indian Tribe for thousands of years. The land, with its rich resources, enabled the Cowlitz people to flourish, and they stewarded the land with their traditional culture. Today, we must appreciate the persistence of the Cowlitz people in our region, as together we steward the land for all our descendants. If you're Zooming in and not coming from Callet's land today, I want to invite you to use the chat function to acknowledge those tribal lands you are Zooming in from right now. We're going to each week try to give another way to engage in learning and actions of the solidarity with Native people. This week, we highlight the documentary Ancestral Waters. Ancestral Waters is a story of the Puyallup tribe's fight for their treaty, their water, and their way of life. For 164 years since the signing of the Medicine Creek Treaty, they have had to fight for the guarantees implicit in it. The mission committee, who has been engaging in anti-racist learning at each of their monthly meetings, will be discussing this film together next month. Check out on YouTube or in the weekly email. Thank you, Ron. A reminder that we have um, our usual fellowship Zoom gathering this week, uh, Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Uh, everyone is welcome to have some time with your church family to catch up on what's going on in your week and to spend time praying together from 7 to 8 p.m. Uh, we hope you'll join us there. Um, I would also like to welcome all the kids who uh, may watch this later on today, uh, and all the kids at heart. Uh, I know that there are many <laughs> here today. Um, so has anyone been on a summer road trip recently? I have. Anyone? Anyone? Okay, so uh, I wonder if anyone would be willing to shout out some things that you do on a road trip to pass the time. Alphabet game. Have to ask you about that one later. License plate game. Yep. Car bingo. Okay. Favorite music. Yeah. Okay. So that's actually our favorite. Dexter and I. We love to get a good soundtrack going in the car and um, sing along. We sometimes call it carpool karaoke. Um. Later on, all of us are going to hear one of the favorite road trip songs of God's people from a long time ago. It's in the book of Psalms, and it was probably a song that the people sang or chanted 
as they walked on their journey towards the temple, kind of like their church sanctuary, for important celebrations like Passover, which was a celebration of when God freed God's people from slavery in Egypt. So entire families would go on these trips and they would be walking together on this long road to the temple and to pass the time and to remember why they were on those journeys, they would sing these songs. And so just so that everyone is ready, uh, Ron Naff is going to read that later on in the service when we do the first scripture reading. Um, It's actually the words, I think, Psalm 84. And I thought that maybe we could do a repeat after me prayer of some of the lines from that song so that we are ready when that track comes up on the radio (laughs) during worship. Um, And when we get to that psalm, I would invite you to pause Maybe close your eyes and just imagine walking along with your family, members of your faith community on a long, long road, watching all the scenery go by and singing this song together and remembering what it means to be God's people on the road of life. Okay, people of God, join me in this repeat after me prayer. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. A day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. O oh Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you. Amen. I now invite Ron up to lead us in our call to worship, which you will find in your bulletin or on your screen. God is shade from August heat, the sweetness of a blackberry right off the bush, a drink from the corner store pressed to our foreheads. God is the ripe belly of a rain cloud to parched soil. They are the soil itself, rich, brown, whispering, a blooming. God is the dark purple leaves of a cherry plum tree. They are the invitation to rest found in the the ink of night sky. God loves melanin, shade, and wonder of deep hues. Let us gather in the shadow of God's wings. I now invite you to hum along and join us for the opening hymn number 275, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Oh, <laughs> 
We invite you to join us now in our confessing prayer, confessing our sins to the one who heeds our prayers. God of our redemption, we confess that we have not been faithful servants. We have not served you with sincere hearts, nor trusted in your salvation. We have forsaken you the living God, and have chosen to follow lifeless idols of worldly power and wealth. Forgive us our sin, O God. Lead us to heartfelt repentance, that we may honor you with our lips and serve you with our lives, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. People of God, the living God forgives all of our sin. The Lord God is a sun and shield bestowing favor and honor on us through Christ, who is the bread of life, the bread of heaven, who feeds us. Amen. During this time, we invite you to turn to your immediate neighbor to pass the peace of Christ. As we have been doing, we will uh, invite you maybe to consider doing that in sign language, and we'll review it with you again today. So the word for peace is uh, become quiet with you. And then, and also with you, like this. So LPC family, May the peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. So pass the peace of God to your neighbors. <laughs> peace, George, Millie. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ, everybody. Peace of Christ, everyone. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ be with you. Ron, to lead us in our prayer for illumination and the first reading of scripture. The camera's just. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, as we hear the reading of Holy Scripture, speak to us your words of spirit and life. Amen. Reading from Psalm 34, and if you wish, as Liz suggested, to close your eyes as we take this journey together. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, indeed it faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. 
Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you, and whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make a make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. O Lord, God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the sunshine on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a bookkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second scripture reading this morning comes to us from the letter to the church in Ephesus the sixth chapter. Let us hear these words to the church. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication, To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all of the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Afghanistan is reeling from decades of warfare and occupation. Palestine, occupied, faces community demolition from American-backed Israeli military. Protesters in the street asking for their lives to matter are met with riot gear, tanks, tear gas. And when I think about putting on the armor of Christ, I wonder about my role in warfare, about my role in violence. Is Jesus leading us into battle? Are we supposed to be singing onward Christian soldier as we violently disrupt other countries or peoples? Whenever I think about violent imagery, the violent imagery of warfare, 
as an example for spirituality, as an example for faith, I really struggle with it. And it really troubles me. But since it came up in our lectionary for today's service, I wanted to give it an honest look. Paul, or at least someone imitating Paul, is sending this letter to the church of Ephesus. And we know that Paul is not writing as a conquering champion, not a victor at arms, or even a particularly strong person, if we take his word for it. Instead, he is writing as one who has been beaten, embattled, and imprisoned. He says he is in chains as he writes this letter, which I can't imagine, imagine is an easy way to write. He's not writing from a place of strength, as we might expect, or as some interpreters might take this passage. But I think Paul is writing in the same vein as Jesus, one who did not answer violence with violence, one who did not gather armies to take over and force his message of grace upon people, one who chose to die rather than use violence to free himself. We see people today living out similar values as they are beaten and imprisoned for their beliefs. This last year, we've seen protesters flood the streets asking for their lives to matter, asking for justice for murders, asking to be treated fairly. And instead of responding to those calls for justice, the state, through the police and National Guards, have responded with violence. They brought in tanks and tear gas and riot gear. And so I think in so many ways, the imagery of war and armor that's being used by Paul is actually challenging the cultural norms of violence that we're so used to. If we look closely at the armor that Paul describes, it doesn't actually seem to be designed to be offensive, to be attacking. It is to help repel evil when it strikes. It's not used to kill or maim or strike down our enemies. The armor is the language of protection, of preparation needed when confronting evil systems and cultures of our world, the same systems and cultures that seek to hurt or destroy. The armor is faith. The armor is peace. The armor is truth. The armor is righteousness. And the sword, yes, the most violent image in here, is the word of God. It's Jesus. The author of Ephesians is using this normal, violent, conquering language of warfare and flipping it on its head and taking away its sting. It's turning the proverbial sword into plowshares. And I believe that these modern-day Pauls and Jesuses, i.e. the protesters, can teach us a thing or two about what, in, what putting on the armor of Christ really means. Author and Pastor L. Dowd talks about her experience of the Ferguson uprisings in 2015 and 2016. When they were confronted with violence, the protesters put on the helmets of tear gas masks to protect themselves. They came prepared with clothes of righteousness so that they could move freely in case they were chased or shot with rubber bullets. And when confronted with riot police beating them back, they held arms and sang songs of resistance rooted in the gospel of peace. I think this imagery, this armor of Christ, is designed to prepare us designed to protect us. Because when we take up this liberative and radical gospel, when we share the good news by feeding the hungry and housing the unhoused, when we challenge the systems of empire that try and keep people down, when we stand against oppressive systems like white supremacy and heteropatriarchy, we will face danger. The rulers, 
the authorities, the cosmic powers, the spiritual forces of death and oppression do not like to be challenged. Wealth and power do not like to be challenged. Jesus knew it, prepared for it, faced it. Paul knew it, prepared for it, faced it. The protesters in the street know it, they prepare for it, and they face it. Are we ready? Are we preparing to face down these systems? Does our gospel support fighting against these oppressive systems in our world, or does it uphold them? Do we arm ourselves with peace, with faith, with truth, with righteousness, or are we armed with violence? I believe deeply that the Jesus way that we are seeking to follow is not one of war, is not one of violence, but I don't think it's passive either. I think it is bravely standing up for what is right. It's with, it's by working with others to create the kingdom of heaven here on earth as we pray every single Sunday. When we stand up for what is right, when we challenge systems that hurt and oppress, we will face challenge. We will possibly face violence, which is why we need to be prepared. It's why Paul tells us to put on this proverbial armor of faith, of peace, of truth and of righteousness. What systems of violence do you feel called to stand against? What spiritual powers like scarcity or white supremacy do you want to work to end? And when you're ready to stand with Jesus against these violent systems, prepare yourselves. Cover yourselves in truth Cover yourselves in righteousness. Prepare your heart and your mind with faith and peace. Because we know that these systems will not go quietly into the night. But we also know that together, armed with God's truth, God's peace, God's faith, and God's righteousness, that we will be able to withstand anything that comes against us. Amen? Amen? Amen. I invite you to join me in our responding hymn, number 307, God of Grace and God of Glory. Uh, you can sing if you're online. Feel free to hum if you're here in person. Shame our want and selfish pride. 
harvest, rich in things and poor in soul. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, lest we miss thy kingdom's goal. Lest we miss thy kingdom's goal. Save us from weak resignation to the evils we deplore. Let the gift of God salvation be our glory evermore. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, serving thee we adore, serving thee whom we We continue now our time of worship with a time of community prayer. During this time, uh, we would invite um, those of you online to type into the chat your prayers. Uh, we can have Holly speak them out loud to us as we uh, interweave them between the other prayers we have for today. We also remind you that for those who come in person, we do leave a prayer request list as you enter the building. So in the future, if you have prayers to put there, you can write them down and we'll share them in worship. And as always, you can feel free to send Pastor Dexter and I um, any prayers ahead of time by email or by phone. So people of God, uh, let us pray together. After each prayer, we will say, God in your grace, and everyone will respond, you receive our prayers, O God. There will also be a prayer of silence at the end for the groans of our hearts that just feel too intimate or tender to share in this public space. Let us pray. God who grieves with us, today many of us come to you with broken hearts because of those who have passed away just this week due to COVID-19 or related complications. We lament the deaths of John Orr and his mother, Olive, members of Kelso Methodist Presbyterian Church. In this time of unspeakable sorrow upon their loss, we pray that you would hold John and Olive's family close, that you would abide with their pastor, Vonda, and their faith community at Kelso Methodist Presbyterian. We also lament the death of Reverend Wendy Taylor's son, this past week, only 41 years old, upon his passing. We ask God that you would surround Wendy and her family with a presence that brings peace beyond understanding. And we also lament the death of the president of the local ministerial association, Pastor Marv Kazmaier, who was rushed to the hospital and died there this past week. For Marv's family, for his church, the New Song Worship Center in Lexington, and for the larger body of Christ who mourns his death, we pray for mercy. There are times, God, when we are out of words in the devastation. Hear us as we cry out in prayer. God, in your grace, you receive our prayers. Uh, we're going to pray for um, Larry's brother, uh, Larry's brother Paul, who passed away, and the wi his wife, who is um, still in mourning. Of course, let us pray. Holy One, you know grief, you know pain, you know loss, and we ask that in the midst of all of these feelings for Paul's wife and all who loved Paul. We ask that you surround them with your comfort, with your hands that will just hold them in deep lament, mm -hmm. 
that as they figure out how to take next steps, um, whatever that means or whatever that looks like, that you would surround them with a community of love and care to be with them every step of the way. God, in your grace, you, you receive, receive our, our prayers, prayers O oh God. God. In the midst of our deep sorrow at the state of our world, Holy One, we do lift up a prayer of thanksgiving that the elders of, on our session voted at our August meeting for LPC to become the first faith partner of the Washington Poor People's Campaign. Deciding to become a faith partner allows us to fully live into our call of seeking Christ's way, welcoming all people by working with the Washington State Poor People's Campaign to lift up all Washingtonians and allow them to, fry, to thrive. God of justice, guide our footsteps as we join this movement of liberation and take actions of solidarity on behalf of those you love. God, in your grace, you, you receive, receive our, our prayers, prayers, O God. For Patty's sister whose COVID is lingering and she suffers, the prospect of long haul illness is ever present. Mm. We lift up Patty's sister um, who's uh, struggling with the, the long lasting effects of COVID. Let us pray. Holy One, we know you. Know intimately Patty's sister as you knit her together in her mother's womb and you see exactly what continues to linger, causing pain or difficulty as a result of COVID. We ask that you would be providing her with healing, watching over her with comfort, um, that you would be surrounding her with um, a community of love and grace to continue to care for her and in the days and weeks to come with um, side effects that we may not fully understand or be aware of yet, we ask that you would just have a hedge of protection around her mm -hmm. and all those who are facing the long lasting effects of COVID-19. God, in your grace, you, you receive, receive our, our prayers, prayers, O God. God. Any other prayers, Holly? Okay. This morning, in the midst of everything, we also lift up a prayer of celebration with Nick and Kelly Bucola, who welcomed their first child, Finn, into the world last night at 5.05 p.m. We say thank you, God of new life, that Finn arrived in this world safe and sound and that Kelly and Nick are both doing well. As Finn continues to grow, we pray that you would fill Finn with life and joy and a sense of your presence. And we pray for your presence with the whole Bucola family as they welcome Finn to their lives this day. God, in your grace, you, you receive, receive our, our prayers, prayers, O God. God. We hold now a prayer. Is there another prayer over there? Okay. We hold now a prayer of silence. There are more groans coming from our souls than usual this week. And so we leave a prayer of silence knowing that God holds all of those things with us. Let us pray. God, in your grace, you receive our prayers, O oh God. We continue our prayer together, praying to our parenting God, mother and father of us all, as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Join us, co-creators. Let us bring forth our offerings in the common pursuit of justice and liberation, remembering that the sharing of our resources 
is the heart of the story of Jesus. Let us live in the legacy of shared abundance. If you would like to continue giving financially during this continuing strange season, you can, of course, mail checks to Longview Presbyterian Church at P.O. Box 1613 in Longview, or you can give online at our website, longview.com, sorry, longviewpres.org slash giving. <laughs> uh, the details are available on our website. We also have offering plates at the entrance and exit to our sanctuary if you would like to give in person. You'll also notice that here on the cross there is a paper chain. Uh, this is from before the pandemic when we, everyone would write down other kinds of gifts that they have offered throughout the week. Gifts of talent, time, and energy that make this community such a rich place of abundance. Though we aren't adding more to the chain right now, we encourage you to look at it and recall the gifts in kind and the gifts of time and the gifts of talent that you have given this week. We also want to remind you, uh, our whole church family, of the Deacon's Fund and that it is here for you. Uh, we know that this is a season of financial stress for so many, and this is one way that our church family would love to come around you in tangible ways of support. So if you're in need of <clears throat> any financial assistance, large or small, please contact Pastor Liz. Her email is liz at longviewpress.org, or you can always use the pastoral emergency line 360-358-5765. Our church family would love to come alongside you. We invite you now to consider all the gifts you've given this week as we enjoy a live offertory from our church musician, Teresa Schumacher. Join your hearts with mine in prayer. Living God, bless us with the guidance of the saints and the elders that we might organize for your kingdom through tenderness and compassion. In our righteous anger, breathe with us so we can root into your wisdom. Use our offerings 
so that through our daily actions of care, we might create a world where all are cared for. Amen. I invite you to join us in our sending hymn, number 840, When Peace Like River. Feel free to hum along in person or sing loudly on Zoom.
Thank you so much for joining us at Longview Presbyterian Church as we worship in this hybrid space um, together. Uh, don't forget to join us Tuesday at 7 p.m. for fellowship on Zoom using the same Zoom link. You can also find that link on our website. So now receive the benediction. May the gospel of peace wake you up in the morning. May it walk with you like the shoes you slip on your feet. May the truth of our interconnectedness go with you as if it were your wallet, your keys in your back pocket. May the love of the Spirit cast cool shade upon your life, that you might rest under the tree of your belovedness, your living ripe with the fruits of the Spirit. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the abounding love of God, and the fellowship and friendship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us, today and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. We invite everyone to enjoy a live postlude from our church musician, Teresa Schumacher. For those of you in person, there will not be fellowship time inside. Please keep your masks on, maintain social distancing, and then you can follow the, the yellow brick road out that way and then outside into the fresh air. For those of you on Zoom, if you'd like to stick around for a time of fellowship, just stay online and you can have some time to connect to each other. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today.